Hey guys, Dan here, and in this video, we're gonna do a little showdown between the new Samsung Galaxy S10 and the very new LG G8, which just went on sale. And we're gonna go through some of the differences, what I like about each phone, what I don't like about each phone, and maybe this will help guide which one you might wanna buy in the future. All right, so these first two things that we're gonna go over, design and performance, we're not gonna spend a whole lot of time because the design elements of each phone are very 2019, and you'll understand what I mean in a second. Um, they share a very similar design element. They're all glass, they have curved edges. Unfortunately, I don't really like curved screens. Uh, they have a headphone jack and USB-C charging ports at the bottom, and both have dedicated assistant keys. Now, the difference between the S10 and the G8, the G8 uses Google Assistant, while the S10 uses Bixby, which most people don't use. So, something to keep in mind. The S10 and the S10 Plus have a triple camera system on the back, giving you a telephoto a wide and an ultra wide angle lens, while the G8 has a telephoto and then a super wide angle lens. There's also a physical fingerprint sensor on the back for the G8, and there's an ultrasonic fingerprint sensor built underneath the display for the S10. Uh, in my opinion, a physical fingerprint sensor wins here because the S10's ultrasonic fingerprint sensor has just been way too unreliable for me, and uh, we'll, I've actually talked about this a lot, so I'm not gonna really dive into more detail. Uh, apparently they just released an update actually today while I'm filming this that's supposed to help. So maybe check back in in the future and I'll do a whole video on the ultrasonic fingerprint sensor and see if it's gotten any better. But they've done this before and it gets better for the short term. And then over a couple of weeks, my fingerprint seems to just not be recognized anymore and it just doesn't work. Both phones also have a face unlock. LG's face unlock is far more secure. Reasons why? On the S10, you can actually take a picture of yourself and show it to the phone and the phone will unlock. That's not okay. On the G8, you can try to do that, but it doesn't work out and you have a little bit more of a secure phone. Really, face unlock on an Android phone is not quite the same as what you would get with Face ID because it just has far more technology with that um, the camera system that's built into the notch but maybe one day we'll get there to have an Android phone with some sort of similar Face ID like feature. As far as the displays go, I love both displays. I actually really prefer the Infinity O display on the S10 over the notch. I think that notch is starting to get overplayed and it's getting phased out a little bit, but LG seemed to have stuck with it for another year, so I don't know. Personally, as little bezel as possible for me is ideal. So I'm gonna go with the S10's display, but they both look great. As far as form factor goes, they both feel relatively similar, although I will say the G8 has slightly less harsh edges around the corners. Sometimes with the S10, when you're holding without a case, it just feels kind of sharp, like the edges are digging into your palm. And you don't really get that with the G8 because it has this really interesting curved edges kind of all around the device. So from a personal standpoint, I probably still wanna go with the look and feel of the S10, but there's really nothing at all wrong with the G8 design. It's just getting a little bit kind of boring to me. Uh, there's not like it's something groundbreaking with the S10, but I just really like the Infinity O display a little more, and uh, I kind of just like the way it feels a little more. Now, as far as performance goes, both have 2019 flagship specs. Your Snapdragon 855 on both of them, uh, there's eight gigabytes of RAM on the S10, and you get six for LG, although these are hardly noticeable differences. Uh, the LG has 128 gigs of internal storage configuration, but you can expand it up to two terabytes with a micro SD card. And the S10 offers two configurations, one at 128 gigs and the other at 512 with micro SD expansion up to 512. Uh, there's a 3400 milliamp hour battery on the S10 and a 3500 on the G8. Uh, they're just little spec differences, but nothing crazy. They both perform very well. There's little to no hiccups at all so far in the early life cycle. Check back with me in a year and this might change drastically. As far as software and features go, here's where the true differences lie. Samsung released a brand new skin for Android with its Android 9.0 Pie update and they call it One UI. It's a huge leap forward from its TouchWiz days and it's filled with a much more modern design element and features. As I've mentioned in my S10 review, I'm not a fan of some of the aspects of the UI, like the cartoonish looking icons for the most part, uh, but I really like what Samsung did overall. They made it usable to the point where I'm not rushing out to download Nova Launcher or some other launcher from the App Store or messing with all of the customization options and skins. My real only gripe would be that I'd wanna kinda of change the icon pack to something else, but that's really it. Not to mention there is a system-wide dark mode, which is huge and I really like it. It makes certain apps and settings look beautiful. If you're a fan of the curved edges, which I am definitely not, you can still use the edge screen features on the S10. 
Uh, but let's be real, we really do not need a curved edge for this feature at all. You can just swipe in from the right or left side, wherever you have the handle set up, and you can access a bunch of quick information and settings. I always forget this feature is there, but for some of you, you might still use it. This is more useful than say LG's new floating second screen. Basically, it's the same concept kind of, but it only gives you access to a few quick toggles and settings. Uh, it's not very feature or information rich. Really, most of LG's UI is kind of boring and outdated to me. It runs well, and from a look standpoint, it's not awful, but it's the same old song and dance that we've seen for the last couple of years. I feel like they really don't put a lot of stock in the look and feel of their Android skin. In terms of interesting software or hardware features, LG does offer a couple of different unique features, and so does the S10. The S10 has one major feature that's interesting and pretty useful, and that's the wireless power share which basically turns the S10 into a mobile wireless charger. So in theory, you can charge a Galaxy Watch, your Galaxy Buds, or even other smartphones. Unless that's your second smartphone or your significant others, I'd probably stay away from doing that as much as possible as your battery will take a huge hit. It's useful for other accessories though, I will give it that. LG's interesting party trick comes with Air Motion. Air Motion uses the front facing camera, which they call the Z camera, and allows users to basically control their smartphone using a series of hand gestures, shapes, and movements. So with these gestures, you can open up applications, control media playback and volume, and you can even accept or reject phone calls or turn off alarms. It's definitely got me feeling like I'm living in the future, but I just don't see the real world practicality in this. It's early and I'm still trying to figure out why I would use it, but I'm still not sure that I will. Also inside that front facing camera notch is the ability to unlock your smartphone using your hand. LG calls it hand ID. Using the same Z camera, the phone will read your veins in your hand and then unlock the phone after matching the veins with the stored hand data. Unfortunately, this feature takes practice and it's harder to achieve than air motion, but for me, it has the most practicality. I can really use something like this when my phone is lying on a desk and I can't get to the face unlock or the fingerprint sensor, but I just wanna see my notifications or unlock the phone easily. Again, it's early and maybe I'll get better, but I'm not betting my life on it. Finally, the last section of this head-to-head -head comparison between these two phones is the camera, or more specifically, the cameras. There are three cameras on the back of the S10 and two on the LG G8. Fun fact, the G8 cameras are actually completely flush to the phone. I like this a lot. It's a unique and nice design choice, so kudos LG. In terms of camera performance, both do a great job at your everyday run and gun photography. That's the only aspect that I'm looking at here. There are a lot of other camera features like Instagram mode on the S10 or AR emoji, which I never use. And I'm willing to bet that most average users might, maybe they might use AR emoji because it's fun, but I just don't see a lot of these, like the, the full on manual camera mode on the LG. You can do video and you can do manual camera. I don't think a lot of people are gonna use that. So I'm only going to do a quick comparison between some of the photos that I've gotten from run and gun. And to be honest, I don't really wanna to give too much thought. I want to know what you think of each photo. So just let me know in the comment section down below which photo you think looks better. All right, finally, as far as which phone I would buy if I were you, I would probably go with the S10. I prefer the look and feel of this device as well as the software over the G8, but that's not to knock the G8 at all. It is a really good device. In fact, if you want a premium flagship that can pretty much go toe to toe with what's been claimed as the best Android phone out on the market with the S10, then go ahead and purchase the G8 because to be honest, it's probably better value considering the price of this phone unlocked is $200 cheaper than the S10 and $50 cheaper than the S10e, which is Samsung's slightly more budget friendly version of the S10 lineup. You would however lose out on the larger form factor, a better display, etc., if you went with the S10e. You can also find this phone for even cheaper than the $699 price tag, as some carriers are selling it for as low as $620. That's a pretty good deal. I still like the S10 a little bit more in my opinion, but it's all personal preference. I can only advise you on this decision so much. So with that said, let me know in the comment section down below which phone you like better, or if you bought one, let me know which one you bought and why in the comments. Thanks everyone for watching. I appreciate it and hope to see you around in the next video.